Hey there everyone, Hatesh here, back again with another video. I hope that you are enjoying this series because I'm just loving it. If you are enjoying it, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as share this so that other people can also take advantage of this amazing Docker series. So, so far in the series, we have seen that how to build a container, play around a little bit, open up some of the port so that world can interact with it. Now we're gonna move on to the multi-container scenario. So the goal of this section is to create a very simple project regardless of what technology you work on with, whether it's PHP, MySQL, Node, Mongo, Ruby, MySQL, Django or SQLite, whatever the stack you work on with, it doesn't really matter. We want the two technologies just right there in some application. It can also be a server and a client application which interact with each other. We really don't care. We really want to build such an application which interact with some another service. The great example would be a database. It can be anything. Don't worry. You don't have to much uh, learn much onto the database side. We just want to create two applications. So these two applications are going to be standalone inside a container. This one is going to be separate container. This one is going to be separate container. And then we want to wrap them up inside a container as well so that world can interact with them and we can just work on with it. Now such of creating multiple container requires a kind of a strategy that we have to give to the Docker. In order to follow these kinds of strategies, we don't work with the Docker, rather we work on the Docker Compose. Now you don't need to install any other further tool on the Docker Compose. Whenever you were installing the Docker on your system, the Docker Compose command was also installed in your system. The Docker Compose command is very similar to the Docker as well, but there are some strategies and difference between the file as well. In the Docker, we use a simple Docker file. In the Docker Compose, we use a YAML file, which has an extension of .yml, and we're gonna discuss more about it, and that's pretty much all you need to know as of now. As we move forward in this section, more things will get more clearer to you, but just keep in mind, we are still working with the Docker, but rather we are gonna be working with Docker Compose majorly in this section. So let me first give you a brief idea of what we are about to build, what is our strategy, and what is the product that we will get by the end of this section. Let's get started with that. I have created a diagram for you to understand for that. And this is what we are about to create. So let's first have a look onto the right hand side part of this application. So here we can see that we have got an application. So this is basically kind of a startup application. A big startup is coming up with an app. And this is a regular, very basic node based application that we're going to design because this is going to consume a very less amount of code. And you can just see me, you should have just node installed and that's voila, everything is going to be fine. So this is what we are going to create. Now this is a database. Now since we have worked so much in the Mongo in the previous videos as well, we're gonna create a Mongo, but you can create a database for MySQL, Postgres, or any other as well with the almost exact same code. We just have to change a few names here and there. Now internally, uh, we are gonna design them in such a way that this database is in itself a, se a totally separate container. And this application is also on its separate container. These dotted line here are representing that these are the Docker container. Now, since this application is going to use a database, that's why we have to make a connection of this application to this database. So this connection is important and that's where we are going to take and help of the Docker Compose. Don't worry, it will get more clearer as we move forward. Now, since these app are just wrapped up inside a container, we also want that these set of application or this entire product should be available so that any user can actually have an access of that. So we're gonna learn that how a regular user from a regular browser can access this without worrying about what is the architecture of this application, whether the node was used or not, or whether this uh, containerizing or the Docker thing was used or not. User really don't care about that. So that's all the goal that we are having up here. Again, remember, it doesn't really mean that if I'm working on Node and Mongo, you should also be working on that. You can work on PHP, MySQL, or any other combination. Even the client and server app would be absolutely fine in this case. You can make this as a simple server, and you can make this one as a client, and client can be uh, accessed by any of the user on a specific port. I think that this Node and Mongo application will help us to understand a lot of this, and that's all what we are gonna do. So this is our uh, goal to create for this section, and we're gonna use Docker Compose for it. 
So I hope everything is clear for you for this upcoming section and few couple of videos if you're watching it on YouTube. And that's it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and quickly let's catch up in the next video.